Welcome to episode 12 of Inside the House podcast. Uh, today we're here with Gavin uh, from Dot Digital, and uh, we'll let him introduce himself in just a minute, covering all things to do with email marketing, right through to omnichannel experiences, customer experiences. So, uh, Gavin, what's uh, your title, where you are? Over to me, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, Gavin, you didn't get my surname. I, on purpose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Logeny. Is that how you pronounce yeah, it? Logen- I did actually Logen- wonder. Yeah, Logeny, yeah. 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 Okay, it throws cool. people, don't worry. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Gavin Logeny, uh, Head of Strategy and Insight at Dot Digital. Um, been there for, uh, actually, it's my 10th year now. Oh, super. Yeah. 10 yeah. years. 10 years. You don't look old enough. I, I know. Yeah, very right. blessed. Blessed. 15, 15 16 years in, yeah. in uh, email. Okay, superb. Yeah, so. And uh, so how did you fall into email? When you was at school, I'm sure you had big desires to be like an <coughs> RAF pilot or something, but, but what, did you, uh, what did you want to do? Um, you know what? I always envied those kids at school that knew exactly what they wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I wanted to be a fireman. Even when I was little, I didn't even think I wanted to be a fireman or anything like that. Um, so it's kind of weird finding my way. I, um, on an off chance, took politics as an A-level. Okay, cool. Um, just threw it in there, in the mix, and really got into it, yep. and started studying politics at, at really? uni. Yeah. So Brexit's not on the cast today, but obviously, Oh, yeah. yeah, let's not go into that. Let's not, let's not do that. <laughs> You've um, obviously got more of an educated <coughs> opinion than I have. Yeah, well, we'll see. Um, yeah, so I studied politics. Um, when I left uni, again, I was still kind of up in the air what I wanted to do. Um, I was always really interested in music, um, and I thought maybe I'd get into something like that, but... Um, literally uh, took a job um, selling ad space in magazines. Okay, yeah. For Haymarket. Okay, yeah, Haymarket yeah. Media, as it was. Haymarket, um, yeah. back in the day. And one day I was selling to this woman um, who worked in this thing called email marketing. And she said, look, I don't want to buy whatever you're selling. Obviously wasn't a very good salesperson at that time. Um, but uh, can you come in for an interview? Really? Yeah. So wow, it's on the phone, on the phone call. On the phone, said. yeah. Really? I was selling to her and she said, I, I, I quite like you, I quite like the way you, you come across. So <clears throat> coming for uh, coming for an interview in email marketing, had to do yeah. some reading and, and yeah. see exactly what, what that was. What was email marketing? Yeah, maybe? what is that? Yeah. Um, as a lot of people used to say back in the day, isn't that just spam? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, completely fell into email. Oh, really? As I said, I've been in like, uh, 16 years And that was in digital, now. straight into dot No, digital, that right? wasn't digital. That was a, um, a smaller ESP called um, Sign Up To. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so I was there for for about five, five or six years, and then uh, moved to Dot Digital. Okay, superb, yeah. superb. And obviously, from Dot uh, Digital, some people will know the brand, uh, and now obviously transitioned over uh, from Dot Mailer to Dot yep. Digital, and uh, that's yep. been uh, interesting for you guys. It's been really fun. Yeah. So we um, transitioned uh, January this year. Yep. Um, we all knew it was coming. Um, to some of our clients, maybe a bit, a bit of a bit of a shock. Some people still, we need to tell them. Yeah, we used to be uh, dot mailer, um, but um, it was a it was a needed move. Um, as as you said, you know, we're going to talk about sort of omni-channel uh, bits a bit later. But email wasn't isn't the only thing that we do. So yeah. it's, it's I guess our, our bread and butter. Um, but um, you know, we've we've acquired a, uh, a company called Kamapi who do uh, um, a lot of SMS. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're you know, getting a lot of people into WhatsApp now as well. Yep. Um, retargeting. Um, you know, there's full automation suite, and we've got different services within the company too, apart from you know myself yep. and the consultancy type thing. Um, so there's a lot more than just email. So dot mail was kind of a bit misleading okay. um, for for not just ourselves but for um, clients and prospects. Uh, so dot digital is uh, more encompassing. It was our, our holding company's name anyway. Okay. Um, I know. From from way back. Um, so yeah, dot digital uh, limited, and the platform is now engagement cloud. Yeah. Because that's what we're helping clients do: yeah. engage more with uh, their customers. And it, and it does. It sort of you know I've seen the transition on the hub as it's moved forward, and mm. it really is bringing in lots of different features. Yeah. So so tell us where these features I suppose are useful. Uh, and I've mentioned before we started that some <coughs> of the clientele, or sorry, the clientele of the, of the inside the house yeah. is you know everything from large brands down mm-hmm. to small, say one man bands as well. Yeah. And you know. Some of these guys I've known for a long time on the one-man band side mm-hmm. don't even consider using anything for engagement. And yeah. that can be anything from email marketing, is yeah. that simplicity, um, text messaging, sure. update appointments, that yep. sort of stuff on, 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 on route. Mm-hmm. Uh, also anything from like you know, social media advertising, yep. Facebook advertising, Instagram advertising, sure. 
all these areas and these guys don't even consider that so just um, for me I, I wanted to get a few ideas from yourself and a few insights today mm -hmm. to hopefully that we can all learn or uh, the, the, the listeners of Inside the House podcast as well as us here right. you know for, for big brands I suppose people always seem that it's you know they're always the ones sending you loads of emails and spam it's not necessarily relevant and, and how, what's the best thing to try and keep that relevant? To keep your, your comms relevant. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a, to <coughs> me, it's a big thing. I mean, you, you tell us it's different. It's, yeah, that's a, that's a six minute long question, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Um, I think uh, a lot of the time, people tend to forget that you can just ask. Mm -hmm. You can just ask your, um, your readership, you know, what is it you're actually after? Um, and that can start from, from the, the, the get go, the first interaction you have with them. Mm -hmm. So they've signed up. And, I, we talk about it a lot and you know there, there are there are a lot of sort of advanced features that we can talk about in a platform you know like this AI bits and pieces and product recommendations but you know you've got the basics like a welcome email mm -hmm. you know if you if someone's signing up to your email they're really hot at that point yeah there's something that's that's sort of driven them to, to sign up um, so why not use that time to understand more about what it is they want to see from you mm -hmm. now it might, it might be just that um, the wording for your sign up is just sign up to get the newsletter. Yeah, fair enough. Newsletter, but you can still ask them. You know what else they want to they want to see because you, you might have more content. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of give them the option in that sign up to well tell them tell them more about you for one, but then understand uh, or give them the opportunity to uh, to understand that they can choose exactly what they want to receive from you. So you would ask them a host of questions to maybe cl clarify. What area of the business? If you've got multi channels, and what are the areas of the business? Not, not, not necessarily just, a host of questions, but you can you can do. Um, there's a couple of things you can have like a preference center yep. for later, um, so that can just sit on the foot of your emails all the time it's going out, um, kind of giving people the opportunity to say, look, I want to hear more about X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. um, if you've got the opportunity to to put out a survey, then you can ask more questions on that. Yep. But literally, just at the at the, at the start, don't bombard them with things. Um, you can use some sort of um, progressive profiling, which is just over time asking them more questions. Yeah. And I think that's one thing that people don't do. They kind of, they will employ that sort of asking a question right at the beginning yep. and then forget them later yeah. on, you know, and just sort of hammer them. And that's when you start to lose the relevancy. Okay. Well, that's one thing we found, well, I certainly find myself as an experience, and we find this as well here, mm. is you send out an email and sometimes it's almost like, do I want to send out an email because... I oh, know I'm going to get X number of unsubscribes because mm -hmm. every time you, you, you invariably you do because yeah. at some point through that journey people are going to fall off so you kind of have to accept that sometimes you're going to have to lose them oh, yeah. but if you can narrow them down at the same time to more mm. of a, an area of the business or mm -hmm. say what do you want um, one thing I find with Preference Centre is only personally <coughs> is sometimes I always feel that as an area where people can go to unsubscribe and do you not yeah. feel that sometimes leaving it on there is but it's just better to, if, they, if they want to unsubscribe, they want to unsubscribe. I I, you know what? I say, I say this a lot, and I probably should find another analogy or something. Um, but you know, hiding the unsubscribe button mm -hmm. on an email, because like you said, it's going to happen. Hiding the unsubscribe email, um, unsubscribe link, sorry, on the email is like um, knowing you're going to get dumped by someone mm -hmm. and avoiding all calls and texts from that person. <laughs> So yeah, it's, it's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. The, the main thing to do is to make sure you're delivering the, the relevant stuff. So work harder on, on making sure that content's relevant. Yeah. And it's asking them questions is one thing, mm -hmm. um, but that's like your um, sort of the implicit data. Yeah. And I've told you implicitly that that's it. Um, no, sorry, explicit data. <laughs> explicit, that's yeah. explicit data. Yeah. Um, the implicit stuff is what you should be focusing on as well. Because, you know, they, they're clicking on links. Um, if you've got the technology, which we have, um, to sort of monitor around your site yeah. and what the things that things they're looking at on your site, how long they've been dwelling on a, a particular page, then use that. Mm -hmm. Use that because you know they're clearly interested in in that stuff. Now uh, get get that the relevant yeah. comes out. So what you're trying to do is hit them whilst they're still sort of hot and say, yeah, mm. hang, we know we kind of like we've noticed you've done this. Be careful with that because it could be creepy. Yeah. 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 I, I, I remember we were, was, we were talking a minute ago about the old uh, the, the list companies that have all sort of gone yep. to the wayside after mm -hmm. the GDPR and that kind of stuff. And one of the oh, you um, said it. You said it. I said, oh, yeah. You said it. Yeah. Said, yeah. How long? But, how long? What's that? Like nine yeah. minutes. Oh, nine yeah. Minutes nine, in? nine minutes in. I already mentioned the word. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and I've done Brexit as well, so we've done what we've oh. done well. But from the other side of it, um, but every time we used to go on their website, I used to literally log on to their website. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I was on there, I can guarantee you in about 30 Bang. seconds, my phone would ring 
and my desk phone because it was on a direct line on the account. Really? And then the phone, I pick up the phone, they go, hi there, yeah, we see you on the website, what can we help you with today? Oh. Um, and at the time, I, I that was, this is going back sorry, eight years ago, so okay. it was very creepy. Yeah. Um, but what I did find, actually, was quite, it was actually quite useful because very often building lists for customers is actually hard work. Um, so you find out which database, which list you'd be wanting to employ, whether you'd so use you like that Experian sort of data. Well, I kind of accepted it was going to happen, So, but it, but it was quite good because it actually made my life a little bit easier. But can you imagine if you're browsing on a website looking for a pair of shorts and then next minute someone phones your phone randomly <laughs> and he goes, hey, what are you looking at them shorts? And that's starting to get a bit I've too I've got those busy. shorts too. Yeah, yeah, can you imagine that? That would be a little bit too that, much. No, that's a, that's a bit much. I mean, it's, 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 being, it's being smart about it, obviously. You know, you can... If someone goes on a website and is looking at particular pages, you, you could you could almost fire them an instant email. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that though, because you know you give them an opportunity to sort of browse, come back. You know the fact that they're on there it could be just looking for you know just some inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, but if they come back several times over, mm -hmm. then then sure, yeah, ping them an email, mm -hmm. and that you, you don't have to sit around waiting to to send out that email. You know, that's where automation comes in. Yeah. Um, you know you set it up. Has this person been on this page? X amount of times, yes, have they purchased? No, they haven't, great, they're, they're primed for this email. Yep. Um, and I guess the, the, the big thing is gonna be the content in that email. Because yeah. if it is extra creepy, it is the, we've seen you, um, you know, you haven't bought anything, that's, that's super creepy, that's gonna turn most people off. Yeah, well, we, well, some of our competitors do that for us, and uh, what we've done is gone down the lines of um, sending relevant information about that yeah. product. So for instance, you're looking at a bathroom product page, yeah. We categorise it as a bathroom product. Mm -hmm. We might send them an email uh, five hours, six hours later yep. with, "Hey, this is the top trends in bathrooms today." Yeah, you know, just to say, "Hey, don't forget we're here." Exactly. Sort of thing. Yeah, and um, that's not creepy. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's not. It's, it's not. Really it's, it's it's the it's the fine line between sort of um, being useful and helpful, mm -hmm. and then overstepping and going creepy. Yeah, because you're 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 sending them stuff that is relevant to what they're looking at at the time. Um, if it was a particular product, then maybe you could have a focus later on in the email or something about that product, more information. Yep. Um, but sort of more general stuff to give them more inspiration. That's great. That, to me, that's, that's, that's just helpful. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Superb. And then for smaller companies, small, small businesses, <coughs> I know this is a, a challenge to a certain degree, but because you know the, um, the, the knowledge that small mm. businesses have got, but certainly some of the ideas and concepts they could employ. Yeah, I mean, you can use this sort of stuff as well. It's, it's completely scalable. Yep. I, I think it's more about what is the end product for you. For a, for a larger company, and I know we were talking about open rates just before coming on here, but for a larger company, you might be looking at, at those sort of stats. You might be yep. looking for sort of a large um, open rate click-through rate, and then you'll start to convert later on. For smaller guys, you'll probably want them to go to a, a particular call to action. Mm -hmm. um, so using the same sort of tactics to, to kind of understand when you, when you first get their details, you know, it might be that you're face to face with them and yeah. you ask them face to face. Yeah. You know, I've, I've got this little thing going, I send out emails, um, what sort of things would you be sort of interested what? in getting? Yeah. yeah so you're good. asking face to face yeah, yeah. and then put into, into practice. But your, your calls to action in the email might be more different, they might be more targeted. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, more so, granular. Yeah. So, cause you, and hopefully you would, so segmentation, obviously we talk about customer personalization, but segmentate, if you're asking there and then, you can put it yeah. in a segment yourself, can't you? Yeah, exactly. This customer, if you're a plumber, for instance, and you're doing boiler servicing, you can click them under a boiler, yeah. service, boiler servicing customer. Bathroom suite, you can put a bathroom suite yeah. customer. Yeah. And you can move down that sort of line, yeah, I suppose, yeah. and then target some stuff out to these guys. Yeah. I, th I think in a lot of cases, I mean, people do get worried and think that, you know, email marketing or just general omni-channel marketing or something is like a, a bigger player's game. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be. You just, you know, make it scalable. Yeah. Make it work for you in that, in that sort of, that, that pocket that you're in. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And, and so what other sort of personalization tips for big brands mm -hmm. have you guys sort of seen that work really well? You know, obviously we <clears> all try and segment people based on maybe male, female, demographic, mm. you know, mm. these are all very arbitrary facts to sometimes yeah. try and segment people with. Yeah. But what other tips and tricks do you think that they're out there that we can sort of employ? Uh, maybe different, obviously every industry could be slightly different, but at least some ideas. Yeah, yeah. It's, I think it's, it's, it's using bits and pieces like the, the, the data. It comes yeah. out to, to the data you have. So, um, you know, understand what data you have and then how you can use that in your, in your comms. I mean, <sighs> People will say, oh, first name personalization is, is, is the key, you know, put that into the, the subject line. Uh, yeah, test it. 
Uh-huh. Test it out and see what see what's working for you. Um, I think using a lot of dynamic content to yeah. sort of drive the the comms to make it more personal is, is definitely going to be the the key to you. Yep. So again, when you're sending out to larger groups of people, if you've got a couple of thousand people on your list, a um, hundred thousand at times, then it makes it a hell of a lot easier if you're using pers- uh, dynamic content to personalise. Okay. Because uh, then you can maybe send out a more generic type email feel, and then there's blocks within it that mm-hmm. change according to to who's receiving it. Okay. Um, but then if you can do like the other scale of things and you'll probably have to get like a, a company, I mean, we, we could do it for clients, but to, um, you know, really personalize and, and change the whole, uh, sort of look and feel according to who's receiving it. Yep. So I'm almost blue in the face, um, using this example. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's not an example from your world, but I use it all the time to kind of show exactly what you can do with data to personalize. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, uh, an email from EasyJet. Mm-hmm. And it was a, it's a few years back now, um, but it was um, all about I think their sort of tenth um, sort of anniversary or something like that. Um, and the email, although it was about their anniversary and it should be all about them, it was geared really directly to the individual. So it's all about the first flight you ever took with them, okay. the last flight you had with them, and it's kind of laid out really nicely in the in the email. Yeah. Um, even down to things like um, you prefer to sit in the window seat. Mm-hmm. Uh, so all using that, all all that information to personalise it, but then at the end of it, um, getting a really strong call to action, which is based on the places you've been to, first, last. Um, this is a recommendation for you. Okay. Really. Okay. Yeah. That's very clever. So those recommendations. Yeah. That's a, that's a that's a bit of personalization there. Yeah. So I, I mentioned sort of AI and product recommendations, yeah. but straight away that is giving you um, a more of a personalized feel to the individual receiving it. Mm. I suppose also as well, for what I got from that as well, it makes you feel like they've made an effort. Yeah. And sometimes people we want to be fussed over to a certain degree. Yeah. You know, a lot of people want to be fussed over and say, Joe, you know you've made an effort now. Yeah. I'm going to engage with that slightly exactly, more. Yeah. You spent a bit of time thinking about a way to engage with me yeah. and I'm now going to reciprocate yeah. in the same sort of way. Mm. Um, I think a lot of people find that. It's interesting then. So that do you reckon that drives loyalty? I know you're supposed to be, ask, be asking me questions. No, 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 but... I think it's, good. it's an open conversation. I mean, yeah, I think I think it does yeah. drive loyalty. I mean, I've always I've always a great believer. You know, if you think people deal with people, mm. and that's very often a one-to-one interaction. Sometimes on a bigger scale, it's actually finding ways to have yeah. that one-to-one interaction with someone. Yeah. And if you were think, if I was sat here now and I'm working for EasyJet and you, I was trying to sell to you, then I'd look at things as a salesman, saying, "Oh, yeah, they like to sit in the window seat. This is their preference. Mm. Blah They like this to go to it. Spain." And yeah. I'll have this conversation with you and say, yeah. oh yeah, okay, well, do you want to go somewhere yeah. else in Spain? I mean, we, we call it human conversations at scale. Because mm-hmm. that's what you do. You, what you describe there is exactly what you do. And I, I, I use a lot of retail examples a lot because people can relate to those yeah. things. But if someone, back in the day, you asked me what I wanted to do when I was, I was, I was younger, I worked at Gap. Um, <laughs> so back in the day, if I was working in, in, in Gap and I saw someone sort of walking around you know, picked up some jeans, maybe put them back, and then looked at a jumper. Come, I'd be, I'd be watching them as they, they walk around and I'm stalking. Like, I really, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> if you want to know what I do in my spare time, I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool, that's fine, that's fine. Um, but yeah, you kind of watch them and get, you know, get a feel for their body language and everything. Yeah. Um, and you would approach them in a slightly different way if they were looking at one thing to another. Um, maybe if it's seasonal as well, it's, it's hot outside. You'd probably um, approach them and ask them about something else different. And you, you're trying to take that experience mm-hmm. and, and put it online. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, it's human conversations at scale. Um, and it's, yeah, just humanizing that, that process. Yeah. Yeah. What about people get it wrong? I mean, you must have some great examples that have gone wrong. That's one of the questions I would not ask you. I'm going to give you names, though. No, okay, we have to, might keep, you have to keep it a little bit uh, uh, sort of nullified. But th- with, with some of the brands, I mean, great examples <laughs> of like, you know, people going online buying stuff. As, mm-hmm. a, as a guy, you know, you, you so go online, you go to a clothing store, you might buy something online, mm. and but then they never personalise stuff back to you. And then I've had it before where you get emails back through for, for dresses or, or, or random bits like that, and you think to yourself, do you know what? You, you could have taken some basic data yeah. or at least worked yeah. out that maybe it's not But for see, me. That's, that's the problem I have with things like, um, uh, you mentioned it, um, segmenting on things like gender. Yeah. I don't think it's a, it's not a thing anymore, really. No. Um, what it's more about is having a look at browsing behavior. And I get that from Amazon quite a lot. And Amazon isn't the best shining example of email. But, I mean, everyone gets emails from Amazon, right? And mm-hmm. they all kind of interact with them. Yeah. Um, but it's th- that's all based on things that I was looking at. Yes. So if I was looking for a present for, I don't know, my mum or something, 
you know, and uh, you know, few more pro female products, and all of a sudden, that's all the stuff I'm getting. Yeah. Um, you can kind of understand that. Yeah, yeah. You kind of understand that. But if every email I get, and there is a a, a clothing line, and I won't name name names, but I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. I'm to them. I'm a woman. Yeah. And I've actually tried to go on to their preference center and change my preferences. And it reverts back straight away. So that's something that they need to, so they're, to they're keep on top of. They're only going to stuff yeah. out to women. But maybe they're not interested in, in, in you as a customer. Maybe they're thinking you should buy for someone else or, or whatever. I don't know. They, if they only sell women's clothing, I suppose, then maybe that's what they do. Well, no, they, they sell men's clothing. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? They sell I mean, men's clothing. It doesn't clothing. make any sense. Yeah. yeah well, I, I see this a few times as well. I, yeah. see, I, I bang my head against a brick wall. One of my colleagues here, has, she has, um, Kelly, she has a rabbit. And I went online to buy some stuff for her on Amazon, just because I got a Prime, so mm. I went and ordered it, and she gave me the money. Yeah. So, uh, but then for the next X number of weeks, all I was getting was yeah. rabbit hutches, rabbit food, mm. rabbit collars, rabbit jackets, and it's like, yeah. there's all this stuff available for rabbits. I just yeah. couldn't even believe it. Does that mean for you then? Do you reckon you are going to switch off from from Amazon emails, or would you would you then go and change your habits on Amazon to get that? Change it back. Yeah. Um, no, I think that's an interest. That's an interesting question. I wouldn't switch off at Amazon because maybe of, of who they are, um, and because you never. You, I'm not going to stop buying from Amazon because mm. I started marketing to me mm. that way. And I know that genuinely, if it's if it's relevant, because I have been do, looking at a certain product, it's normally pretty good or they're yeah. about. So for me, I, I wouldn't. But yeah, I suppose <coughs> if it was like a, maybe buying a gift, I've had that before. Yeah. When you buy a gift for someone, yeah. and then that gift company can send you loads of emails, that, and then that gets a bit spammy sometimes. I wouldn't mind if they're using, again, product recommendations, um, if you're using smart product recommendations that are going to say, all right, you bought, um, you bought a hutch. Yeah. yeah, so maybe there's some sort of feeder that goes with that hutch, then that's great. So you've bought it, mm -hmm. this is the thing that really annoys me, you've bought the hutch, yeah. and then maybe Amazon will do this definitely. Yeah. Sorry to bag on about Amazon, but that's you'll, you'll, get, you'll get an email about another hutch. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, 100%. It was like, well, hold on, I've just bought one. Yeah. You, you can see that, you've got, you've got my purchase history, you can see I just bought that. Yeah. So why are you sending that to me again? better to do is follow up with some relevant um, um, related products. Mm -hmm. So, you know, things that go along with the it. The food to go with it. Exactly. Or whatever, I think, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the thing. And I think that's what a lot of people forget is, um, you know, you've got a huge amount of data, mm -hmm. uh, implicit and explicit, as I said, but also you've got purchase history as well. Mm -hmm. if, you've, if you've got that stored, yeah. Yeah. use it. And it might be a case to give people a, a little bit of a, a break. And this is something you can test out. If they've just bought something, Look at maybe um, the next comms you, you send out could be, if that's what you're doing, um, sort of discounted products um, for, the, for the month or something. And maybe you're sending that out. If someone has just bought, maybe just take them out of that. Yeah. Exclude them from that list. Yeah, for a month or so. Yeah. yeah just to just tone down a little exactly, bit. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, and, and again, in that, in that respect, if, if all you're sending out is just buy, 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 buy type emails, yeah. you might want to rethink that strategy too. Yeah. Because you're training people to, to look at your name when you come through to the inbox and it's, okay, they're just trying to sell me something. Yeah. Whereas someone else who might have some, um, some interesting content. I was talking about this just um, last week, actually, um, Patagonia. Mm -hmm. um, that's my top tip, actually. If you haven't signed up for Patagonia's emails, okay, yeah. make sure you do that. Yeah, Because they're out. really good in, in terms of the, the content you'll get mm -hmm. that isn't always pushing something down your throat, selling you something. Yeah. So they're, they're quite big on the environment and making mm -hmm. sure that, um, you know, they, they say, I think it's something like on their website is, um, we know that um, all life is potentially extinct, mm -hmm. you know, seems to be extinct. So, you know, we're looking after the planet, blah, 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 this and that. And that's, that sort of story they have, they use through all of their, their cons. Do they? So even if, even if they're selling you something, that's in there. But then they've got the other side of things as well, which is, um, you know, content coming from their blog, and you know, just general stories that even if you're not buying something, there's relevant content mm -hmm. um, for you if you're if you're buying into it. Yep. That you can you can sort of read and catch yeah. up on. I did look at their homepage a while ago, and the the the, this week, the top of the homepage was nothing about their products. It was just about the environment. Like I think mm. the story about their environmental mm. stuff. So yeah, yeah, I think that's uh, people buy into that, that that story. You know, yeah. if 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 you've got a story. Definitely tell it. Yeah, definitely. Because it, it's that's what sets you apart from uh, from the rest of the guys as well. Good.
Yeah. Perfect. And going along with um, the Omni Channel and, and the mm -hmm. experience, I was also going to. I wanted to cover that. Not only have we got things like the bricks and mortar side of, of the industry. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of bathroom showrooms out there that have, have struggled, and kitchen showrooms have struggled. Our, our industry struggling big time mm -hmm. in the high street. Um, I think, if I'm honest, a lot of them could do a lot better yeah. um, with technology. Mm -hmm. um, but also, you've got the email marketing, you've got the social side of it as well. Yeah. And sometimes it's difficult for businesses to tie it all up, or well, certainly that are under-resourced. Mm -hmm. Even us here, we, we try our best, and we've got a fair, fairly decent team. Sure. So, so what sort of things can, can guys do to sort of maximise their ability? I think it's it's making things sort of work for you. And as, uh, I'll say automation, but it works in a number of different ways. So obviously, mm -hmm. automation, you can set up um, a programme and let... Um, um, your campaigns swing out, you know, as and when someone reaches a particular a particular point. Um, so that's great. But then things like you're saying in store, yeah. using SMS mm -hmm. can be great. So your store, if that's your store, that's your sort of real estate. You can get a sign up and say, you know, text blah 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 to blah blah blah, and all of a sudden you sign up to the main list. Um, hopefully you've got their email address and possibly their, their phone number as well. Yeah. Um, so that's there's two channels you can start marketing them. Yep. to them on yep. but also you don't have to have someone in the store that's kind of saying well if you sign up to our main list or blah 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 they can do that off their own back okay. um, yep. so I think that's that's really good and that, that brings another channel into the mix because mm -hmm. I think even if um, you're a sort of big store or smaller store um, or you know independent guy um, you don't want to use SMS to sort of hit people heavily um, mm -hmm. in terms of marketing but you can do things like, um, as you say, you know, coming for an appointment, maybe I'm running late, or just to remind you that the appointment's today, or you know, you're servicing for your boiler, or this, that, and the other. Yep. Those, all those types of things. That's you know, it's another channel that you can yeah. use. Because um, because SMS is quite offensive. Uh, people find it quite offensive if you try and advertise yeah. them. When uh, obviously with the likes of Domino's every week tend to very timely send me a uh, text message on a Tuesday mm -hmm. or, or mm -hmm. Friday, ready for the weekend, and we don't take too much offence to that. I've so, I haven't unsubscribed. Um, but you know, from that point of view, you, if it, as long as it's relevant again, I suppose the content. But yeah. like my delivery running late, boiler, whatever, all yeah. that kind of stuff's good. Yeah, good. I think it's it's when people are in that mode now of uh, making sure that um, when you're getting people to sign up for for your email, you're being completely clear um, yeah. and um, open, honest, and transparent about what's going on. Yep. Um, you're signing up for this mailing list, we'll only ever send you relevant content, we'll never share your details, blah, blah, blah. It's the same thing with SMS. Mm -hmm. I think you have to be a lot more sort of um, watertight on that and just say, look, we're only going to send you occasional bits and pieces on this or just be um, break it down to just purely service uh, type things. Yeah. I think it's really useful when I've got a delivery coming, you know, yeah. a DPD, yep. and I get that text. Yeah. It just lets me know how, how far away they are. Perfect. That's that's that's, yeah. that's the sort of stuff I'm looking it's for. The kind of service stuff I always think was service information mm -hmm. for, from there, not necessarily selling your stuff. No, so no. Much. I think you choose choose your channels, and that's I think that's the the best thing you can do in terms of uh, an omni-channel strategy. Mm -hmm. It's not all about. Um, sort of using all channels because I mean yeah omni channel is all channels but yeah. it's not about using all channels it's more about um, understanding which channels are right for your customer at that point in time mm -hmm. um, so like a whatsapp type thing that's not going to be marketing it's more of a service yeah. message and we're, we're sort of getting more and more clients um, sort of looped into using whatsapp and it's it's really interesting yeah um, it's funny how like a third party essentially free app has become like a customer service response tool mm -hmm. without even trying. And, yeah. And, you know, what, what difference to a certain degree does it make if it's a, a, a message? Yeah. But people seem to prefer mm. WhatsApp. There must be well, something, sticky, over here. something sticky about it. Yeah, it? definitely over here. I think people just sort of bought into the whole um, the whole app itself and using it. So I think it's 1.5 billion users worldwide. Yeah, a couple um, of people. Yeah, just a yeah, few people. Just a yeah. Few, yeah. Um, but that's, I think that's why people want to use it because you know you don't have to get people to adopt it. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to teach them how to use it. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's just just quick and quick and simple for them to get up and use. Yeah. Um, but yeah, especially this one because I know I know WhatsApp are kind of you have to go through a few hoops to to make sure that you're not going to be using it to to market to people. Yep. Um, in that way, and then it is just um, mainly a service message. Yep. But I I think people will like that because as I said, that that many people have it. Mm -hmm. Obviously SMS as well, but it's just, I think it's uh, an app that people use more often. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, if you want to take advantage of that, then I think Do you think it's less a... offensive because it's an app than your actual text number? 
I wonder if there's a barrier there that I maybe think, you overcome that I you think, think yeah. it's not texting me, but yeah. it's WhatsApp, so it's kind of yeah. like an app. And it's, well, it could it, be Facebook Messenger, it could be WhatsApp, it could be yeah. something else. So actually, yeah. I'm not quite as offended. Yeah, th- I think I think you're right on that because you do have things like um, yeah, Facebook Messenger and uh, and WhatsApp. I think people do look at those differently mm. from from Nasty, SMS because it is it is your number. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, oh, so, it's, um, it's strange, isn't it? So yeah. That's a psychological thing yeah. that people don't it's really put slightly different. Them, put two and it's slightly together. different, yeah. Um, yeah. But especially if that's what, what WhatsApp are, uh, are doing, is they're being very careful about how they allow businesses to use it, to mm-hmm. mar- uh, not market to contact um, individuals. Mm-hmm. I think um, you know, those people using WhatsApp will be a lot more trusting of it because they're not getting bombarded yep. with certain things. And that's what I'm saying, use the use the different channels in different ways. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. And from an advertising point of view, um, with the, the social media advertising mm-hmm. and linking in to, with your website, the browsing, the browsing data, the history to bring re- recommendations into to like to social as well. Yeah. What's your thoughts on the feeling of yeah. all that? I mean, it's it's. I think it's it's, it's a great tool to have. And again, um, that's what Omnichannel is all about. You, you can look to see if you're getting that engagement on mm-hmm. on email. Yep. Um, but if you're not, then you can you can retarget on on other platforms. Yeah. I think it's it's just having a, a good look and assessing um, the overall engagement you have, mm-hmm. um, and just understanding or realizing there are other channels as well uh, to kind of hit people on. Yeah. Um, I think the key thing as well is if you're doing that is to to make sure that there's some sort of um, uh, you've got like a, a unified comms thing going mm-hmm. on. So you understand that if um, if you sent an SMS out to someone, yeah. then that's part of that journey. Yeah. Then the next step, you send an email, but don't contradict what you said in the, in the SMS. So it's having a good view of everything that um, mm-hmm. that is going out over time. So you're not, um, imagine you were you on a website and it, you know the, the chat app popped up and you started speaking to someone on chat. That's great, you know. That's that's good, um, good conversation there. But then you might want to um, send them a follow up SMS afterwards, just mm-hmm. to remind them what you spoke about, and, and then an email goes out too. So it's three separate um, channels you're contacting them on. But if you're contradicting yourself on one of those, then it just breaks the whole customer experience completely. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got to make sure all of those are sort of joined up quite nicely. And that's a challenge because mm. there's very few businesses that can do all of that across mm-hmm. all different platforms, mm-hmm. and also tying it into your maybe whether you've got an ERP system whether you've yep. got a sales system whether you're like us we've got Magento Online yep. you know if you're bricks and mortar you may in, you may be hybrid in several systems yeah. to bring it all together that's, yeah. that's quite a challenge yeah. technologically mm. yeah. yeah I think I think having the right tech stack for one I mean we manage uh, you know a whole bunch of those that's why we're sort of omni-channel um, yep. business now so we can, we can help you um, get on top of that type mm-hmm. of thing um, but yeah, it is difficult. I mean, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. No, yeah, very true. That is very um, true. I guess for the for the smaller um, one man band type companies, it's yep. not necessarily the, the thing to do. No. Nope. But then, really, what you should be doing is is mastering that that one or two comms that you're you're going to be contacting people on. Yep. Um, and getting that up to speed. And when once you do grow, then you know you'll have another another route to to go down. Yeah, because a lot of businesses they they start doing it, but then they don't necessarily get all the right questions at the beginning or don't mm-hmm. ask the right questions for mm-hmm. the, the can you sign up the email or whatever it may be yeah. and then they feel they can't use that data yeah that's quite yeah. a problem that's, that's difficult you have to ask that question in the, in the first instance yeah, to get it to begin just, with just you know I think people are used to it now mm-hmm. they know that if um, if I'm at the till in a brick and mortar store and someone asks me you know, to send a receipt that they'll probably want to, to send me comms as well. Yep. They should be asking that, it should be clear. Yes. And yeah. I, see, I see that happening a lot, that um, the guys who work on the tills, they don't get the whole thing. No. So they have to understand that, yes, if you're, we're sending you a receipt, but also part of that is, would you like to be on our mailing list too? Yeah. If yes, then great, You've got the, they're gonna get the receipt, which is a, you know, the, the sort of standard um, service com they should be getting. Well, Halfords, then, Halfords, don't yeah. get any Halfords. You go to Halfords now, they don't give you a receipt, well, they ask you, do you want a yeah. receipt or do you want yeah. to you? Yeah, email it to me, thank mm-hmm. you. And they sort of say, yeah, we know we won't share your data, blah, 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 we'll keep you in the mailing list, yep, fine, no problem, Perfect. off you go. And that, that was the spill that I got the yeah. other day when I went to Halfords. Yeah, you know? I think you should get that, the, the guys working on tools should have that pe- that patter. Yeah. Um, so it's not it's not a case of I'm spamming you anymore. No. It's just, yeah, do you want to be on the, the comms? Yeah. Um, and, you know. But from that point as well, you know, trying to save the high street, people are banging on about saving the high street, mm-hmm. but 
all of these businesses, whether they're big, small, medium, whatever the size of the business, if they're asking these questions to get the data mm -hmm. to begin with, that's one thing I can't assess. Because like you say, Halfords have now adopted it to be able to gather data of who their yeah. customers are. They, they're going to be matching your email to your customer data in store, mm -hmm. which essentially they could be drawn through at some point in the future if you shop online. Yeah. You know, starting to gather all that data to have an insight about yep. you. Um, and but so many businesses aren't. That's what I can't understand. So many. I mean, more aren't even getting engaged in this. Yeah, I think. What's the um, hurdles? What's the hurdles? I don't think um, people understand um, how uh, how powerful data actually is. Mm -hmm. What they can be doing with it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, there's a lot of companies I work with who are sitting on a huge pile of data, and then it's like all of a sudden, now what? You know, it's 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 um, it's just understanding what your strategy is going to be. Okay. I, I I don't think um, a lot understand that you can join up the sort of the um, brick and mortar, mm -hmm. and then online quite nicely to have that three sixty degree view of someone, yeah. um, and sort of feeding in uh, those wire receipts. So all of a sudden, I know when you purchase offline, but I know when you're purchasing online, and I can get a sort of a really good um, picture of that individual. Mm -hmm. I don't think um, a lot of companies understand that and maybe they just don't have the right tech mm -hmm. to bring these things together. Yep. I, did a, I did a talk, um, it was at the summit, and mm -hmm. I, was, I was talking about sort of three things that, um, that people need, um, and it's, it's sort of um, strategy, tech, mm -hmm. and data. Mm -hmm. If you've got a handle on all those three things, yep. then you're flying. And I don't think people understand enough about the data, or they're just not getting um, enough of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're probably not getting enough of it because they haven't sat down and thought about what their strategy is going to be. Yep. Um, but once you've got those two things, your data and your strategy, you need the tech to kind of make everything come together. Mm -hmm. So you need those those three things to kind of work. And I don't think everyone has all of that um, no. kind of in in the in the right place. Yeah, it's quite it's quite some of it's quite new to be fair to people. Mm -hmm. Trying to understand and join it all yeah. up. You know, we're only talking a, a few years into its maturity for a lot of businesses to be at, to be able to join it all up. Mm -hmm. So still in its infancy. Um, and one thing I find as well when you get emails and we touched on it earlier, but going on with the design, the UX, the yeah. you know, the, the psychology we talked earlier about the psychology of sale and mm -hmm. so, and something I've been listening to and, and reading a lot about at the minute. <coughs> but that's again just as important because if you think about it, if you get all the tech all the strategy, everything, all in, all your ducks in a row, but yeah. then you go and send out a, a garish green email to people in the wrong... Some people might like that. They might do. But if you're traditionally your customer didn't like it. <laughs> but from, from that side of, you know, you need to have the UX design as well. Yeah. To think about it. And that, mm. that's, a, that's like a job in itself. Do you, do you have, Massively. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have a, a huge design team. I remember back in the day, um, I can, I can say that now, I've been around for long enough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, we had that, the, that WYSIWYG editor. What you yeah. see is what you get. Yeah. Um, and that was like the uh, email design is still in some ways kind of blocky, but it was just, it was really difficult to play about with. Um, so, you know, that was, that was your sort of, um, your thing. You couldn't, you couldn't break out of that WYSIWYG editor. It would, it, it would break when you send it out and you know, a lot of different inboxes wouldn't receive it properly. But now when you've got things like um, our drag and drop editor in our platform is, is brilliant. Um, but then you can have um, our team help you design that. Mm -hmm. And I always joke, one of our um, sort of head designers, I always say to him, yeah, but the design is kind of like a, it's like a dark art really, isn't it? You know, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's all sort of opinion really. Mm -hmm. um, it's subjective. He's, he always tells me, no, it's a science. It's a science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think yeah. it is, 100%. And, yeah. more, and the more and more I learn about the psychology of sales and design, uh, and I've been doing it for quite a long time as well, but the mm. more and more I learn about it, the more and more it is actually a science. Oh, yeah. Simple little changes that can make big impacts. Definitely, yeah. Um, and I think some people need to A-B test things or... You need to test it. Yeah. You need to test. I, I, this, is, this is another thing I say. So I, I'll um, be talking to clients about sort of best practice, mm -hmm. but then at the end of the day, there's always that caveat of... Yeah, it's best practice, but what's best practice for you? Yeah, that's what you need to, to sort of figure out, um, because it works for this company doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for you. You might have to have a small tweak on it. Okay. So yeah. um, to be cheesy, A B C. Yeah. Always be testing. Always be, yeah. No. Nice. A B. No. A B. A B what? T. A B T. A B T. A B T. Not A B C. Always be testing. Yeah. Always be <laughs> testing. Well done, uh, Gavin. Any other any other tips and tricks you want to add before we uh, wrap up today? <clears throat> Um, well, with the UX, um, there, was the, there was a couple of bits in sort of the calls to action. 
um, again, test that sort of thing too. But I think you need to, to look at um, telling people exactly what's going to happen with that call to action. Mm -hmm. Just sort of click here is not enough. Yep. Um, I mean, a descriptive thing, possibly in a button as well, mm -hmm. just to say exactly what's going to happen when you, you click on that and you, you're taken to, to that page. But I think um, that's kind of key with, um, with design. Always test on, uh, the calls to actions. Make yep. sure they're clear enough as well. Um, and and use your data um, enough, I guess, to kind of um, personalize that journey for that individual. Because mm -hmm. you know, even if you've got ten people, or you've got ten million people on your list. Um, that data is going to help you to to make sure you hit the right person at the right place at the right time. Yeah, hopefully get them converted into a sale. <laughs> hopefully, whether yeah. it be product or service, it doesn't exactly, matter. Yeah. It's yeah. just got to be. Well, you know, whatever so. that conversion is for you, it doesn't yeah. have to be a sale all the time. It could be that you know just to get them to download a brochure or a catalog yeah. or something. Yep. yep. Um, but whatever that CTA is, that call to action, then um, uh, yeah, make sure that you're, you're you're making that clear enough and you're driving them, uh, being clear about the whole thing. Brilliant, perfect. Yeah. Thank you very much. No, thank thank you. you. And uh, if anyone wants to catch you uh, on social, you're on... Uh, uh, yeah, on, on Twitter. Yeah. You can get me at Gavi Gav. At Gavi Gav. G-A-V-Y-G-A-V. Like -A -V. G -A -V. Superb, superb. <laughs> we'll get you on there. Perfect. Yeah. yeah thank you for your time. Excellent. We'll catch, thank up you. With you. catch you guys in the next episode. Uh, please subscribe, like, heart, whatever you want to do to the videos. You find them on Instagram, YouTube. Facebook, LinkedIn, and obviously on the uh, podcast as well. Catch you soon.